Hello and a very warm welcome to um, the final section of our forecasting uh, where we're going to take, um, well, we're going to make an introduction to time series forecasting using feed forward neural networks. Okay, so here's the basic idea of um, using neural networks for time series forecasting. So we're talking here about plain vanilla feed forward neural networks, so a fully connected network. Um, so we're going to use them very much like you would use a regression model for forecasting. So this means that the data uh, that we have, the time series data that we have is not in the correct format for our model. So a regression model effectively takes a table of data. You have a target variable or a dependent variable, and then you have a number of other columns within your table which represent the variables, the predictor variables, the independent variables, whatever you want to call them. So what we need to do with a uh, neural network is first pre-process our data. So here we've got an example uh, time series data, and I've called that the raw time series. And what we're going to do is we're going to feed that data through some pre-processing logic. And at the end of that, what's going to pop out is a table of data that's suitable for a regression model, a neural network. Um, now here I've called that normalized tabular training data, uh, and that's because um, unlike regression, neural networks, um, unlike ordinary least squares regression, neural networks like data to be normalized or standardized in some way. Um, so this is a special type of regression model. It's called an autoregressive model. And that means that um, our y variable in our time series is preceded by observations of itself at previous time points, and we call those lags. Um, so for example, we can see here we've got a, a, a variable yt, and that's preceded by lag one, so that was the, the value observed before it in the time series, and lag two, which was the value observed before that. So once we've got that table of data, we then pass that into a regression model and train it on that data, exactly like we would train a normal neural network. So let's have a go at pre-processing some data. Okay, so we're going to build an autoregressive model and we're going to go for, uh, we're going to build a training data set for a lag two model initially. So here's our raw time series data. So just really simple, 10, 15, 12, 18, 21, 11, and 16. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a sliding window across that data and convert it to um, a processed tabular data set. So let's go. Okay, let's, let's create our first window. So here's our sliding window. Um, so it's of length, it's of length three, um, and the window size for our X data is of length two. So when we put that window on our time series, we create a new entry for our tabular data. And so our lag two value is two, is 10. Our lag one va va value is 15 and our y value is 12. Let's go to the next step. And we slide that window up by one. That's called its stride. So we're gonna move it, we're gonna move it down, sorry to be more exact, we're gonna move it down by one. Uh, and now what we get is our lag two is 15, uh, our lag one is 12, and our y value is 18. Let's pull that down again. So we step down one more. Now we have 12, 18, and 21. Let's go down one more. We have 18, 21, and 11. And then we can only do one more, which is 21, 11, and 16. So really quickly, we've built the training data that we will use with our neural network model. So once we've got that, we need to figure out how to use our regression model for forecasting. 
So this isn't quite the same as we've seen with packages such as profit. Um, we need to do some of the legwork ourselves. So we're going to use um, three approaches with neural networks. The first of those is called iterative forecasting. OK, so here we've got a neural network model that expects six input values. So these are the six lags, lag one, two, three, four, five and six going backwards in time. And we're going to pass that into the neural network model. It's going to weight all of those variables and out is going to pop our one step forecast, which is 16. So we now need to take a step forward in time. Let's assume we're going to predict the next the two values ahead in the sequence. So what we do is we manipulate the input data into our model. So we move everything back by one step and we drop the last lag off the model. So we've dropped 10 from the model. So now we've only ended up with 15, 10, 12, 18 and 17. Those are our ground truth values that we know are real values and we've observed. But our best estimate of lag one will be our forecast at lag, uh, uh, one step ahead. So we iteratively put that back into that array and then we push that through the regression model and out pops 20 which is our next estimate and we repeat this so we manipulate our input data again so now we drop off um, lag six again which was 17 and now we've only got four values that were our ground truths left and we've got two values in the array that are forecasts and we push that through the model again and out pops our next forecast and you can and you can see that if we go far enough into the future we're eventually going to be forecasting purely off predictions of our model so the second approach we could take is called the direct method um, and in the direct method what we do is we build multiple forecasting models so, for example, if I wanted to forecast three steps into the future, I would build three forecasting models. So I would build one model that would take an array, an array of input data and output a forecast one time step into the future. I would build a second model that would take the same input data and then forecast two steps into the future. And I would build a third model that would take the same input data and would forecast three steps into the future. And we can see with this data, we just simply concatenate these arrays and we've got our array of forecasts into the future. That's great, nice and simple. It does change the way we work out our sliding window. So we simply, we simply work it out like this. So uh, if we take a model where H equals two, for example, um, our lag 2 would be 10, our lag 1 would be 15 in our first case, but we would skip the next value in the sequence and our y value would be 18. If we were building a, a forecasting model for the third step into the future, uh, uh, we would again use the same input data, but we would skip the next two sequence values, 12 and 18, and our y value would be 21. So we would build up an array that way. So lastly, the third approach we could use, um, and this is very specific to neural networks, is we could build a regression model that has multiple outputs. So instead of predicting a single value like we did in the iterative forecast, we would produce a vector of outputs. So here's the same model as we had with the direct exact approach, but this time we only need a single model. So we put our input data into the model and out pops an array of 16, 20 and 18. So you have six inputs and three outputs from your neural network. So again, this changes the way we build our training data. So for pre-processing for the vector method, um, we need multiple targets within our training data. So we have our X data, our 10 and 15, our first two lags, and then we have the next three values included in our table. And these are the target variables for our um, neural network model, and these are our features 
through our model. If, the, if we were looking at h equals 2, we would only have two um, of these in the model. So now we're going to move over to have a look at um, the notebook.